Good afternoon and welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor. Those of you who have watched the show evolve over the years have probably heard this self-chosen lecture that I'm doing today, but I have to do it every year just before Christmas because it's that important. Christmas is coming and all over the place there are parents who have promised their kids a puppy or a kitten as a Christmas present. So picture, if you will, that house. And there's a beautiful tree and the ornaments are on it and the tree is lighted and the kids are up and they're bouncing up and down. And one of the boxes is wiggling. And the kids are so excited. And they rip the lid off that box and inside is a cute little puppy, fuzzy little kitten, whatever it is, a young companion animal, just what those kids wanted for Christmas. And they're ecstatic. And they're bouncing up and down and they're jumping and they're running around. And it is a heartwarming hallmark moment of the finest kind. And then we take that about two hours later. And the kids have gone back to opening other presents. And that animal is kind of often neglected and looking for trouble somewhere in the house. And because it is Christmas, the trouble is there. There are so many things that can hurt or kill an animal around the house during the Christmas holiday. You're talking about mistletoe, which is poisonous. Poinsettia, which some people say can kill an animal. Some people say will just make it pretty darn sick but certainly it's not good for it. You're talking about the tree, which is the ultimate temptation for puppies and kittens alike. Uh, and when it gets knocked over or when things get knocked off of it, you're going to have broken glass from ornaments. You're gonna have tinsel on the floor, both of which both puppies and kittens will joyfully ingest and possibly die. You have a dish of candy on the table Chocolate is toxic, toxic to animals. The darker the chocolate, the smaller the animal, the quicker the animal will die. But they want it, it smells yummy, and they're no different than any other small, warm creature that says, mm, I think I'll have a couple pieces, maybe I'll eat the whole box. And you've lost your pet. <sighs> Take it forward another few hours thereafter. And the family starts to come together and that puppy or that kitten is going to get shown off and handled around from hand to hand to hand and bewildered. And it's a young, fragile animal, and all it wants to do is find a quiet corner and rest, but there is no such thing. It wants to know who its people are. It wants to start bonding with its people, but there are so many people around that it can't. Or the family's going out to grandma's house or to a cousin's house or to a friend's house. And that small animal is going to be either put in a crate, or at least it will be safe, or left to wander the house, in which case it can very easily poison itself and die. The holiday season with, with travel and friends and celebrations is the worst possible time of year to bring an animal into the house. And yes, it's heartwarming, it's wonderful, it is this beautiful moment. But it's a moment that can so quickly turn to tragedy for the, the, the family that's got the animal as well as for the animal itself. That for years I have been saying, you wanna give the kids a pet, you wanna give them a dog or a cat or a kitten or a puppy, and I think it's a wonderful idea for children to have pets, nothing better either do it a couple of weeks before Christmas, when the kids have time quietly to bond with that animal. The animal learns what its place is in the family, and the family learns what the animal's place is with them. Or wait until after the celebrations and after the travel, and in that case what you do is you make a card and you decorate it, and you write on it that this card is from Santa, and Santa said, I was looking for a puppy or a kitten for you to have, but I thought that maybe you might want to be the one who chose the perfect pet for you. So this certificate promises that after things quiet down a little bit, you will get your dog or your cat. 
let the kids get excited, then let them get excited about their other presence, let them get elated about being with the people that they love, the special people that you see on the holidays, which are, after all, family times and wonderful family times. And then when things start to quiet down, bring that new pet into the house. It works. It's worked for years. The kids are, by the time they get their animal, that much more excited to have it in the house. And no, you don't have that wonderful wriggling package under the tree. But you have an animal that comes into a house that is a stable, quiet, peaceful environment with a family that are all together where that animal, be a dog or cat, and it really doesn't matter, or a bunny or whatever you're bringing in, that animal has a chance to recognize its family and its place in that family and to adapt. And you get a chance to adapt too. The first couple of months with a new pet are difficult. They're stressful. Your house training, your litter box training, your trying to prevent the corners of the sofa from being eaten by a dog who's got an itchy mouth full of puppy teeth. Uh, there, there's just a lot of stuff going on during that period of time. So much better to do that when you have the time and when you don't have all of the excitement of the holidays to confuse the issue. Take it one step further. One of the worst ideas in the world is to give a pet as a gift to someone else. Because your idea of what the perfect gift is for your grandparents may not be what their idea is at all. And the fact that you saw this kitten that just had the sweetest face, and it's going to be all over bouncing up and down kitten-like and climbing up the drapes and doing all the things that kittens do when they're young and playful and looking for trouble and full of beans. Or it's going to be a puppy who's going to be getting loose and peeing on the oriental rug. That may not be what the people really want. Or you may think that they want a small dog and they want a large dog. Or you think that they want this beautiful Persian cat and really what they'd like is a short hair that doesn't shed so much. Or maybe they do want a Persian and you think they should have a short hair. It doesn't work. The people who are going to live with an animal are the people who need to choose their animal. So if you want to get someone a gift and you think that they need a dog or a cat in, the, in their life, um, your best bet is take them with. Wait until after Christmas. I spent a lot of years taping this show and those years I spend a lot of time in the animal shelters and I see what happens Christmas week when the shelters empty out and everybody's joyously adopting and I see what happens in January when those animals come back to the shelter because they weren't given a chance, because people were too busy, because there was too much going on, because the animal got into trouble and they will. Young animals, young dogs, young cats, they get into trouble. It's kind of like having a two-year-old running around the house saying, whoopee, here's the bowl of chocolates, think I'll help myself. Or, hmm, I am a cat and cats climb trees and that fancy tree with all the sparkly stuff on it looks like it wants to be climbed. Or then you've got the dog who says, well, you know what we use trees for? And I think we're going to climb that tree, and I think we're going to go up to that tree, and maybe it's there as a doggy potty. Or maybe those shiny things need to be chewed on. Or maybe the presents that are sitting out in boxes. Oh, look, it's a stuffed animal. Mm. I like stuffed animals. They're great for chewing on and pulling out all the stuffing. They're going to get into trouble. It's, it's just a bad scene. So in both cases. Now, I take it, take, take it down a step from that and say, if you're a young couple and you know that you're going to be around Christmas and you're not going to have any of the things out that are poisonous or dangerous and you know you're not going visiting and you want to take an animal home, 
the shelters are full of some of the coolest looking creatures I've ever seen right now. But right now is early. You could go and adopt two weeks before Christmas and that would work too. Shelters are loaded. I do this show for one reason and one reason only. I do this show so that the dogs and the cats that we show you have a chance to get out of those cages and to find forever homes with people who love them. And I do it so people who are looking for pets have a chance to see these wonderful animals that are there and thinking, well, maybe Tramp was the dog for me. Or maybe I kind of think I could take Taro home. Or maybe that, that, that tiny little cat, that tiny little 10-year-old cat who is so pretty and so tiny and had such a horrible life would like to be my forever pet. And those people who are not looking at having a chaotic Christmas, it's great. Go, please adopt. I'm, I'm, I'm here not to dissuade anybody from adoption because these animals have one chance and one chance only to get out of those cages and into a home. And that chance is those of you who watch shows like mine, those of you who stop and think that adoption is the option rather than buying a potentially puppy mill dog or, and I'm not going to go into puppy mills now, this is a holiday season, this is a happy time, and puppy mills are tragedy for the dogs that are there, the puppies they produce, and the people who wind up for them. But maybe rather than going to a breeder or um, maybe you might think about a shelter. Maybe you might think about that dog who is no longer a puppy, but who is two or three or five or eight or even 10 years old and has known love all of its life and suddenly lost it, suddenly lost the chance to be somebody's special heartbeat, lost the chance to have someone to trust, lost the chance to have somebody to hold his paw in chase the scaries away when the thunder crashes. They've lost that. They've had it. They know how wonderful it is. And no matter how quality the shelter, and no matter how quality the care, and no matter how many times they get walked or talked to or fed treats or any of the other things that they try to do in quality shelters to make the animals feel good, it ain't home. It's not a family. It's not a bond. And the only way these animals get out is if people who are good-hearted and serious thinking go out to the shelters and adopt them and take them home. Every time we go on the air, I show you wonderful dogs and cats. But for every animal that you see that I tape, there are 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 in shelters all over the state of Illinois who are waiting, many of whom face death if they're not adopted, all of whom face a life of cages and cold and the lack of permanence and love. And these animals are companion animals. They've been bred to love and be loved. Open your hearts. Go to the shelters. If you can walk through a shelter and look at the eyes of all of the dogs and all of the cats that are there and walk out empty-handed, you're harder hearted than I am. And you probably wouldn't be wasting your time on this show. I'm out of time. Have a wonderful Christmas. The best of holidays. Think of the dogs and cats in the shelter. Please adopt, but do it right. Thank you very much for listening to me.